So just a little bit after my last video, we got hit with a patch that buffed thermal exhaust feedback, taking the fire damage and heat added per stack from plus 1.5 to plus 3, which is obviously a big boost, but also shortly after that, the understanding of when these stacks are applied took a big leap forward as well. As soon as I saw people discussing this, I was kinda kicking myself, because it's just like how miniguns heat works. Why wouldn't it work the same way here too? To set the stage here, when shooting the minigun, you've likely noticed how the heat meter seems to go up quickly at first and then take longer near the end. Your mind isn't playing tricks on you. Here's the minigun's heat curve. The game uses this to determine how full your heat meter appears. The value at the top is the actual time to overheat. As it progresses, the heat percentage shown on the meter increases following the curve. The curve isn't linear, it increases faster at first and then slows down later on, which means that when the meter is halfway full, you're actually only one-third of the way to overheating. And Hot Bullets activates at 50%, not 50% of the actual internal heat value, but when that meter is at 50%. As a result, Hot Bullets turns on when you're one-third of the way to an overheat. Though I guess I should mention, that was recorded with gameplay capped to 60 FPS, and if you're getting a higher frame rate, Minigun actually heats a little slower, making both hot bullets and overheating take slightly longer to reach. Now, the Drax heat mechanics are a bit different from the Miniguns in that it gains heat per shot rather than per second, which means rate of fire affects how quickly it overheats, unlike the Minigun. Normally, the Drac gains 0.045 heat per shot, and it overheats at 2 heat. This means it overheats at 45 shots fired. Thermal exhaust feedback multiplies heat gain by 1.2x, so it gains 0.054 heat per shot, and overheats at 38 shots fired. Equipping Tier 1B adds another 0.75x multiplier to heat gain, putting you at 0.03375 heat per shot with no overclock, and 0.0405 with TEF. Also, while we're at it, Gen 2 cooling system doesn't reduce cooling delay from 0.3 to 0.2, it reduces it from 0.3 to 0.21. The stat screen is just rounding again. Anyways, here's Drax heat curve, pretty similar to the miniguns, and this matters because, like hot bullets, TEF's damage bonuses activate based not on the actual internal heat values, but instead what those values get translated into based on the heat curve, which is what the weapon's meter shows. Instead of getting the first boost when you actually get over 60% of the way to an overheat, you get the first boost when the meter is over 60% full. But really, at that point, you're still not quite halfway to an overheat. This has two practical implications. One is that the first damage boost kicks in on the 18th of 38 shots. As a result, about 55% of your shots when firing until overheat get the boost, a little more than half instead of a little less than half. And the other effect of this is that, due to the way that the non-linear heat curve tapers off at the end, each stage of the boost lasts longer than the previous one. One stack lasts for three shots, Two stacks last for four shots, three stacks lasts for five shots, and four stacks lasts for ten shots, or up to nine if you're avoiding an overheat. Specifics of how it works aside, TEF feels great right now. And as a little aside that a comment pointed out to me, a weird buggy aspect of NCTC on the Sabata. If you use it with explosive reload, shooting a corroded or poisoned enemy allows you to apply the explosive reload effect through heavy armor. Handy, but definitely not intended. And there's a minor bug with the minigun stat screen now, where the rate of fire upgrade looks as if it only adds half the intended benefit. This is just a visual bug with the stat screen like how magnetic pellet alignment had. Unfortunately, there's a more serious issue. AI tweaks to septic spreaders on June 20th 
have caused their behavior to become not very threatening. They roar before attacking as a telegraph now and seem to check for line of sight much more strictly. Besides the intended behavior of roaring before attacking, if the line of sight check fails, something about their behavior goes wrong and they just run right up to you. Here's an example from an actual mission. This septic spreader kind of just runs into this driller's face endlessly until it dies. Definitely not what a ranged enemy should be doing. Now if you want my two cents, spreaders shouldn't have been nerfed at all from their state at the start of Season 4, but they definitely shouldn't be doing this. It seems like barely anyone's been talking about this issue, which is why I lured you in with this video about thermal exhaust feedback so I could make you notice it. Did it work? Did I trick you 